Welcome back. We are continuing chapter six on addition. We've looked at addition models, addition properties, addition algorithms, and we finish it up today with addition mental math. I like this section. In mental math, we look at two ideas, calculation and estimation. Sometimes you're just given a problem and you don't have a calculator handy. Uh, how do you solve the problem in your head? So we'll look at a few techniques for calculating. Now calculating means getting the exact answer. And we'll look at a few techniques for estimating when a rough approximation of the answer is good enough. Let's see how this goes. In calculation, the first technique is called counting on. This is the simplest and it's one I don't actually recommend that much. If you have a small number that you're adding, so then you think 234 plus 2 is, let's say 234, 234, add 1 is 235, add another is 236, and my answer is 236. You're just counting up to that. Sometimes you see little kids do this with smaller examples. What if I wanted to add 8 plus 6? We see the 8 and then we think 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I made six dots, so I just counted up. Uh, what if I wanted to do 9 plus 4? We start with 9, I think 10, 11, 12, 13, and the answer is 13. Again, I'm going to say, don't do this. <laughs> don't teach this method. Uh, and I just speak from personal experience. This I learned this when I was in elementary school, and it slowed down my math so much. It's a, it's a wonder I am a mathematician today. Uh, I was always jealous of my friends who could add much faster than I could, and it wasn't until college that I finally said to myself, I have got to break this habit. Uh, so as you are teaching math, when you have number facts like 8 plus 6 and 9 plus 4, those have got to be memorized right away. So 8 plus 6, immediately 14. 9 plus 4, immediately 13. So I, I talk about counting on because it is something that people do, but uh, it's not one that I recommend. So know your single digit addition facts. That's really what's important. Okay, moving on. Number two, compatible numbers. Sometimes you have a list of numbers. This technique is good if you have three or more numbers together. And you notice that a couple of the numbers add up to something nice and round, like a multiple of 10. 8 plus 2 is 10, so I can add those first. And then add the 17, and that's easy. That's 27. Maybe you have a whole list of numbers. Uh, I don't know, 5, 6, 9, 2, 1, 7, 3, 8. And you need to add those together. Look for the compatible numbers, 2 and 8, that's 10. 1 and 9, there's a 10. Do you see anything else? Uh, 7 and 3 is 10. And then I'm just left over with 5 and 6. So that looks like 30, and then 5 and 6 is 11. And so you can make your calculation go a little bit faster that way by looking for compatible numbers. Moving on, break apart numbers. So this 42, I might realize that that's really the same thing as 40 plus 2. That's the break apart part of break apart. And then 30. And now it's easier to add the 40 and the 30. 40 and 30 is 70. So 70 plus 2 is 72. So by breaking apart one of these things, I've made my, uh, I've made my calculation a little simpler. Here's another example. Suppose I want 164 plus 29, a little more complicated. How would you break this apart? Maybe 160 plus 4 and 20 plus 9. And then you can add them, add the different parts individually. The 160 plus 20, that's just 180. And then the 4 and the 9 is 13 and we end up with 193 altogether. So um, what algorithm does this remind you of? Maybe partial sums? Yeah, so it's really a partial sums algorithm. One thing is I'm trying to get you to avoid our short standard algorithm. 164 plus 29, we could do this 13, 7, 8, 9, add the 1, 193, and we get the same answer. Uh, but the idea is breaking things apart 
sort of is it is is a deeper reveal of what's really going on inside the numbers. When I do my standard short algorithm, it's a mechanical process which is quick and easy, but it doesn't give us the insight into the behavior of numbers that uh, break apart does. Okay, last step. Opposite change. Sometimes I have a number that's very close to a nice number. 99 is very close to 100. So if I just add 1 to that and subtract 1 from the 17, I get an easier addition problem. 100 plus 16, and that has the same answer. So those are the four addition techniques for calculation. When I want an exact answer, uh, give these things a try. Uh, counting on, compatible numbers, well, don't try counting on. Uh, compatible numbers, break apart, and opposite change. Let's move on to estimation. Three techniques for estimation. The first one you're probably familiar with is just rounding. So let's take a look at the first digit. Uh, oh, well, they have to be the same uh, same place, like the hundreds place or the thousands place. So let's look at the same hundreds place. And then I look after that, and if it's five or more, I round up. And if it's four or less, I round down. So rounding to the first digit in this case gives me 400 plus 100, which is 500. So I would write my answer... 358 plus 134 is approximately, and we make a wavy equals sign, approximately 500. You can round to other places if you'd like. Instead of rounding to the first place, what if I rounded to the second place? 358 plus 134. Now this is a little tougher, and uh, I don't expect people to do this, but maybe you look at this these first two digits, and you think, well, I can round up, and that makes 360. And I look at the 13, and I'm going to keep that down. So that's 130. Mentally, can you add 360 plus 130? That's 490. So here's a slightly better approximation that 358 plus 134 is 490. All I require is when you're doing this mental math for estimation is to round to the first place. But if you look at a number and you can round to two or more places, then go for it. The, the, the more places that you can round to, the better your estimation. Let's look, take a look at another technique. Front end with adjustments. I like this one. This is a little bit more sophisticated than rounding, uh, but it's not much more difficult. Uh, so the front end says, look at your first digits, or again, the hundreds place, you know, matching places, and just add those straight out. So 400. I, I imagine 300 plus 100. Then I look at the remaining digits, and I do first digit rounding. So if I round that 58, that's going to become 60. And the 34 just reduces to 30. 60 and 30 is 90, and so my 400 plus 90 is 490. So notice we get the same answer with the front end with adjustment that we did when I did rounding to two places. But when I did rounding to two places, I had to add in my mind 360 plus 130. And I would say adding 400 plus 90 is a little bit easier than adding 360 plus 130. So I, honestly, I find that I use this technique a lot unthinkingly. I, I'm not even thinking to myself, I'm going to use front end with adjustments when I add these two numbers together. You know, If I have some larger numbers, I just start to add them, and that's a good way to do it. The last technique is called clustering. And this is an example when you have more than two numbers, or you can do it with two, I suppose. But if you have a few numbers that are close together, these three numbers, they're kind of close to 20, right? So it's almost like I could add 20 plus 20 plus 20. Approximately. I mean, you know, it's not exact. It's, it's approximate. And 20 plus 20 plus 20, well, that's just 3 times 20. 60. So you can turn this uh, addition problem into multiplication. If I have I don't know, 71 plus 68 plus 75 plus 
69. Uh, these four numbers, they're roughly about 70. So what's my solution? It's about 70 times 4, or 280. That's pretty nice, right? I didn't have to add those four numbers together. Clustering is useful with consecutive numbers, too. Suppose I have 19 plus 20 plus 21. Consecutive numbers, symmetric about the 20. The answer isn't just approximately 20 times 3. The answer really is 20 times 3, which is our 60. Uh, this comes up occasionally. Uh, 7 plus 8 plus 9. Quick, what's the solution? You should think to yourself, 8 times 3 is 24. It gets a little bit trickier. Let's say I want to add uh, 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9. Now what do you do? Well, the number in the middle is 7.5, and I need 7.5 times 4. Well, 7.5 times 2 is 15, and then times 2 again is 30, and you can get your answer that way. So just some fun tricks. It's uh, something to, to something to practice, give it a try, and, and think about. So that is it. I will summarize by putting all the techniques up again, the calculation, the estimation. Uh, look over these things. See how different types of problems will naturally lend themselves to different types of techniques. Give the worksheet problems a try. Fill those things out. And as always, ask if you have questions. All right.